over 30 twice in his career and I just don't see any way in the world he's not going to hit 30 or more here once he adjusts to the pitching. That one to shallow left field. Reimer coming in has got plenty of time under it and will put it away. So the Orioles are gone. It took over 20 pitches to do it. No runs, a hit, a walk, but only one left on. No score. He's at game time on an overcast night here in the first of this three. You mentioned Nolan Ryan will be starting. He's going to go in Saturday's game. There's Nolan who held a press conference here before tonight's game. He's one and one on the season right now and will start tomorrow. Rogers threw 21 pitches in his first inning. Jeff Robinson back out. He threw nine. Only two of them for Robinson ended up none of the strike zone. Ready to go against Sierra. Ruben Sierra. He's had pretty good success against Jeff Robinson. Five for 15 lifetime against him. They play him to pull. The infield swung way around. Worthington's playing shallow short. And it's away on him. One and one. Well, Gary, in my estimation, this guy's one of the top five offensive players in the American League. Just two years ago in 89, he led the American League in RBIs and total bases and slugging percentage. Last year, they said he had an off year and he hit 280 with 37 doubles, 16 home runs, and 96 RBIs. Over the last four years, he's averaged 25 home runs a year and 104 RBIs. So he's one of those guys when he it's 20 home runs. I think he has a bad year. Tough off season, right? Two one to him. Takes the big wind up and misses. Two balls, two strikes. He is a switch hitter this season. Gone three for 11 right handed and six for 20. 300 average from the left side, including a home run. Five total RBIs. Well, he's one of these guys that just looks for the fastball. And if you hang the breaking ball to him, he gets to it. But he doesn't think too much at the plate. He told me that he just looks for everything hard. Just missed outside with that. And the count is full. Three balls, two strikes. And there he is. Those seasons, 87 to 93 years, only Bella McGuire have done better at putting him up on the board. And uh, Melvin will come over, but is not going to have a play on that one. That's a souvenir for someone way back on the bounce. Well, Jeff Robinson has that fastball that I mentioned that's real heavy. What it is, he throws that ball with the seams and it just runs real hard. When you catch it, it feels like a, about a three pound rock. And when a hitter hits it on the end of the bat, and which you do often because of that movement away, it just tears your hands up. Very difficult to pull him in the air because that ball, when he has it down around the knees, just explodes down and away. A lot of guys pull the ball to the second baseman, but you basically have to try to take him to left center field as a left handed hitter in order to hit the ball solidly. 3 2 to him and he's going to fight it off again. Sierra holds the count full. These teams have already played a series in Arlington. Not a very good one at the plate for Sierra. He ended up going 3 for 14. The Rangers were beaten twice by the Orioles. 3 to nothing and 11 to 4. Then came back with that 15 to 3 win in the Sunday game. Nolan Ryan getting the victory. 3 2 for the third time. And that'll be the first walk given up by Robinson. Dangerous territory here. Each of the first two innings now, Robinson has had the leadoff man on base. Downing led the game off with a single. Sierra leads off the second with the first walk off Robinson. And he's got to face Franco. Gary, that's one thing that we talked about, Jeff Robinson, back in. 88 he had outstanding control his put away pitch was basically a split finger pitch he had that good fastball and slider but when he got to two and two or or had to put you away three and two he threw a split finger and he lost uh, lost that split finger because he had some circulatory problems in his in his uh, index finger and had a real tough time in 89 he's just now starting to get that back that command of that split finger. In at third, uh, the strike is taken as Worthington's believing there might be a bunt. He crawled in on the grass. Ray, here's what you were talking about. 
Well, you can see right there, I played with him in, in 1988, 114 Ks and 72 base on balls. He was 13 and 6. Look at 1990, 76 Ks and 88 base on balls. I mean, that'll kill you right there. And <laughs> 88 base on balls and, and 100 innings. One strike count. Big wrap up chance for two. Kel to Billy. They got it. Baltimore Orioles now have had a double play that they've pulled off. One in the first, one in the second, ten on the season. That is the kind of defense that has always been a trademark of the Baltimore Orioles, why their pitching staff has had such great success over the years. And also the kind of defense that I think that can make Jeff Robinson a big winner again. He's the type of guy that He's 36 and 26 lifetime with a 4.65 earned run average, Gary, which you and I realize that only three guys in history. That's Reimer, who's got a base hit to left, played in by Milligan. So Robinson's living a little dangerously, too, with the defenses protecting him. Reimer's on. That'll be his sixth hit. Reimer's now batting 1,000 against Jeff Robinson. He's three for three lifetime with a home run. And he's on at first base with two down, and Gino Petrali will give it a whirl. Well, you saw the way he hit that ball. Just like I mentioned, the left center field, you have to take Jeff Robinson the other way to compensate for that good movement on that fastball away, and that's what he did with that line bullet over shortstop. Two down, no score. And Petrali, first ball hitting, will foul it back. Gino is in a real slump right now. That about tells a story on that. He's also 0 for his last 10. Now he's got an 0 for he'd like to get rid of. And they're going to play this left hander to pull a ball. The 0 1 gets away, not far enough. Held on to by Melvin. Not a lot of production. No. <laughs> to continue that thought, Gary, about the Jeff Robinson with 36 and 26 lifetime average, you told me there were only three guys that had ever had that high an earn run average and had a winning record. It's amazing that ERA of 5.96 since 1900. Only Wes Farrell, Guy Bush, and Mike Smithson have had higher ERAs <laughs> and had a winning season. I mean, you're talking about some great run support. That's the only way you can get away oh, with a man. 5 9 6 ERA and come out of it with a 10 and 9 record. And that's what he did last season. Two ball, one strike count, two down. The runner at first, and Petrali takes it up high, and the count is 3 and 1. Then you look at Robinson and it's 16 wild pitches second most in the major leagues last season <laughs> you add that to the walks more than strikeouts and you look at that ERA <laughs> and you wonder how in God's name can you be 10 and 9. Hey I remember last year Billy Muffet pitching coach for the Tigers you know how close the you know how close the uh, announcing booth is at Tiger Stadium. We were yeah. there last week. He says, hey, you better take your glove up there because with Jeff Robinson pitching, you're not safe. <laughs> well, what we were talking about, Ray, he had run support of 5.37 runs per start, the second highest in the American League last year. He lights enough candles, I guess, because <laughs> it ain't mirrors, it's candles. Here's the 3-2 runner going with two down, tap towards second base. Billy Ripken will play it. Over to Davis, and that'll do it. No runs ahead, a base runner left on. We'll go to the bottom of the second. Gary Thorne with Ray Knight. Great to have you with us on our ESPN Friday Night Baseball. Yeah, I did, yeah. Dwight Evans will be leading it off here in the bottom of the second inning for the Orioles. Evans, Worthington, and Leo Gomez, one of the two rookies they've got on this club, facing Kenny Rogers, the veteran, in uniform and in right field. After not playing there all last year. And he takes it for a strike. Well, the Orioles are hoping that with the addition of Dwight Evans and Glenn Davis, they'll add a little pop to that middle of the lineup that was so hurting last year and picking up RBIs and extra base hits. 
and the fact that it protects Cal Ripken so much. I talked to Cal Sr. today and he said that Junior has so much pressure off his shoulders because for the last couple of years he felt like he had to hit a home run. And now he's going back to hitting the ball to right center field, which was a trademark early in his career when he won the MVP and the Rookie of the Year. They throw him breaking balls in, then he would jerk that pitch away. But a lot goes through your mind when you feel like you have to do everything and mount all the offensive attack. And Cal started trying to pull everything. Takes that one down low, and the count goes to three balls and two strikes on Evans against the lefties last season at 265 overall Dwight Evans batted 249 he's got a 3 2 count here and he'll draw the walk you talked with him before the game I sure did and just asking him about coming to Baltimore and his thoughts played for the fans and, and I love uh, the New England fans the Boston Red Sox fans and uh, to me that was what I went out there for um, I think it was a tough thing for them to do and it was you know I'd be lying to you if I told you it, it didn't hurt it hurt but uh, uh, coming here they've made it real smooth for me the people are beautiful here the uh, the fans are great and, and the club is there's a lot of professional people here and I'm, I'm liking it here it's a pretty honest answer He's a very honest man. I've always had great respect for Dwight Evans. We talked last two weeks ago in the exhibition game. He was going. Dwight Evans took off. Another one where the Orioles are trying to move the runner up, and Craig Worthington protected him, fouling off a pitch that was down low. One ball and one strike. Obvious hit and run. Dwight Evans doesn't run real well anymore. Excellent base runner, very smart base runner, but with the count, one ball, no strikes. Manager Frank Robinson rolled a dice and Worthington struggling 174 a lot of times managers try to get their young hitters going by letting them make them their mind to swing the bat. You can I, see by the strategy being used by Frank Robinson it tells you about the struggle this team is in with that 203 batting average. They've had only seven home runs while giving up eight on the season. They've had only 53 hits while giving up 72. They've been on the short end of it offensively. So they're just trying to get it going by manufacturing something. And Gary especially early in your career that that base hit early in the game sometimes just opens the floodgates for you if you can get that base hit with a hit and run and be one for one then you tend to relax and and all of a sudden you get another hit and you're two for four and and it's all relaxation you start to press as a young player heck as an old player you press and I know later in my career when I started to pinch hitting and platooning it was very very difficult to keep that timing and every at bat became critical and uh, with Gomez right behind this young man Leo Gomez pressing him for the third base job every at bat is critical for him 2 1 delivery is swung and a miss Rogers is doing it the hard way he's been behind now on four out of the five batters that he's faced in this game behind on the count he's been able to come back he's already given up two walks one in each inning did get a strikeout in the first Worthington with a 2 2 count nobody out Evans at first being held and that's to short and that's a base hit by Usum. Reimer will play it back in. Jeff Houston had shaded over towards second base. And the runners are on at first and second, John. We showed you the home run by primetime. Well, Jack Armstrong gives up another one. This to Sid Bream. is second as a member of the Braves, and it's way back there. 2-0 is the score now in the second inning. Braves at home with the lead over the world champs. Gary and Ray. Here's the other man that Ray was talking about coming to the plate with runners on at first and second. Leo Gomez Gomez got his first start in Milwaukee yesterday he is pushing for that third base position Gomez played 12 games with the Orioles last season he has five years of minor league baseball under his belt 277 at triple A last year with 26 home runs and 97 RBIs very strong numbers for Gomez and he's bunting to move him up and he puts down a great bunt coverage at second by Franco there's an outstanding sacrifice by the designated hitter Gomez gets the base runners to third and second with one away well this is just textbook baseball here get that bat out front and just catch it with that right hand just like you're catching a thrown baseball perfectly placed 
And Frank Robinson talking about three run home runs as we talked about early in the year with them having a tough time scoring runs goes back to the old Oriole teams of the last couple of years manufacture a few runs. Now a chance for Melvin Bob Melvin the catcher two runners in scoring position and Rogers gets the strike in one out no score bottom half of the second the best scoring opportunity here early on in the game Melvin facing a left hander for the first time this season he's had only seven at bats and he lines it right through Rogers in the center field Pettis up with it they'll hold the runner at third and RBI on the single by Melvin Dwight Evans scores Worthington stays at third base and it's one nothing Baltimore he almost killed Kenny Rogers <laughs> Wow oh, man this ball right here, this is a bullet he sends it right back big curveball look at this I'm telling you between his glove and his head the only reason that Worthington did not score there is he had to respect that ball being caught man he probably couldn't even see it but the ball hit right back at Kenny Rogers well what a shot that was the Orioles last season you see down at the bottom of the pile with runners in scoring position that hit right there by Melvin will really help Bob Melvin had been out sick that's the reason he's only had eight at bats he would have been playing more for them but he had to get back to feeling well and he certainly on that base hit he looks great Worthington at third Melvin at first and here's Billy Ripken butting squeeze they got him in a squeeze bunt by Billy Ripken scores Worthington and the Orioles lead it two to nothing. Two perfect bunts in the bottom half of the second inning have set up these two runs. Well, this reminds me of the old Los Angeles Dodgers. There you see Worthington coming. Ball's butted a little bit in the air, but great, great bad handler, Billy Ripken. Just got the ball right out there in perfect position, about 30 feet from home plate. His first RBI of the season. Down to second base goes Bob Melvin and the leadoff batter Mike Devereaux up two runs in a walk a leadoff walk. How many times does that hurt you that leadoff man on base increases your chances of scoring by about 70 percent. And that's what Rogers has done in the first two innings and here in the second he doesn't get away with it. And just good solid fundamental baseball by the Baltimore Orioles we talked about over the last couple of years how well they played defense and pitch and and the reason that they played so well in 89 because they did everything right fundamentally they bunted they hit and run they stole bases they hit the cutoff man two well executed bunts there's a man Frank Robinson right there so you do whatever you have to do Gary everybody talked about this team being bombers this year not scoring runs by the hit and run or bunts but it shows you they've been struggling so you, you change gears you go to something else and it's working Devereaux goes after it and doesn't get it that'll be the second strikeout for Rogers but the damage is done two hits two runs rather on two hits and two wonderful butts this is the new one that will open next season it's not been given a name it's right downtown it'll have a fascinating warehouse wall the B and O railroad warehouse there it is right there it's going to be outside the lines and right there's what it'll look like when it's completed and will it ever add to the aesthetics of downtown Baltimore look at that right down by the harbor what a magnificent looking yard it's made just for baseball it's going to have asymmetrical lines I love it right field 319 335 down the left field line it'll have a left center 410 a straightaway 400 and it will have that great building that big B and O warehouse building out there which you can actually hit if someone drives on about 460 they'll have a chance to break a window because that building is separated from the field by a 400 by a 60 foot wide concourse that's all it's going to be a great new yard there are going to be a lot of guys shooting for it but only a few of them can hit it 460 now <laughs> yeah you're right I'd love to see somebody in the major leagues break a window wow. hitting a home run would that be wonderful 
So a 2 nothing lead. The Rangers will have to battle from behind. Steve Bouchelle leading it off. And you know, Babe Ruth's home where he was born is here in Baltimore, only about three blocks from that new stadium. And his dad, who owned five bars in his lifetime here in Baltimore, one of the bars was in center field of the new stadium. That's that, where it was located. I heard that. Is that that's true? Is that is that definitely that's true? That's true. It was right in center field. I think it was the last one that Babe Ruth's father owned. History does repeat itself. 2 0 delivery. And Bouchel takes the strike. I visited that home today. I'd never gone in before downtown in Babe Ruth, where he was born. A very, for baseball fans, I think you'd really enjoy it. It's, it's the home. It's got an Orioles exhibit and a Babe Ruth exhibit. And a very entertaining couple of hours. Here's the 2 1. Bouchel pops it up to shallow left. Randy Milligan puts it away. One down in the third. What type of uh, house is it in? It's uh, one of those old row houses. Uh, brick? A brick row house, federal type construction, which you see in downtown Baltimore a lot. And uh, just a two story. They've got a little souvenir shop when you go in, and then you can see the Babe Ruth exhibit and a number of Baltimore Oriole items, uniforms, bats, uh, and they keep adding to it. And they're going to expand that with the yard being so, the new yard being so close uh, to it. So it's. You get to Baltimore, baseball fans, look it up. Ninth hitter is Pettis playing for the bunt, Worthington at third. He was right. Foul ball, strike one. But Gary's one of those guys that even if you are a third baseman, you have to be moving in because he can put that ball right out there about 18, 20 feet down that line, dead, and he has such great sprinter speed, it's almost impossible to throw him out. You see Worthington at third base. He's in there a good 15 feet in front of the cut there and he'll be moving forward watch his step he'll be moving forward as his pitch is thrown Pettis does not come around on that one one on one and believe it or not I've seen Gary Pettis I remember Daryl Thomas when he played with the Dodgers and the Padres I would play him that shallow and he would still bunt and if he didn't it just right that ball would come out there with nothing on it would die very difficult to pick up a ball not rolling this dead still when you're coming in full speed barehanded. He tried to shove that one down Worthington's throat but he missed it. Big cut one ball two strikes one out third inning Baltimore leading it two to nothing getting their two runs on just three hits. Pettis is 0 for two lifetime against Robinson up with one down and nobody on here and Robinson a little too long for him. Second half of our doubleheader on this Friday night of baseball at ESPN. The Dodgers and the Red Hot San Diego Padres. Brett Butler, Benito Santiago featured in that one. Coming up at 10.30 as soon as this one is done. Dodgers and Padres. Gary, Gary Pettis, a lot of people wonder why he doesn't lead off. The big reason is because he strikes out so much. He struck out over 100 times, six times in his career. Can't have that in the leadoff spot. No, he's, you know, you talk about stealing bases. He's stolen over 40 bases five different times with a high of 56 in 1985. But when you strike out 120, 125 times a year and have an on base percentage at barely 300, it's very tough to lead you off. He has struck out four times thus far this season. Maybe what's most impressive is he has drawn five walks. So if he can keep the walks up. Make the strikeout number look a whole lot more bearable. Three balls, two strikes on him. Wind blowing from right to left here at Memorial Stadium tonight. 3 2, he's got his sixth walk. So Pettis, not swinging wildly, picks up the second walk off Robinson today. Well, that's something when he went to Detroit, the Sparky Anderson worked with him real hard on Veda Pinson being a great hitter and a good bunter. Trying for him to get deep into count, try to take some walks. If he got behind ahead in the count one and oh, go ahead and take a strike. Go to two and oh, two and one, three and one. Try to see a lot of pitches and he would learn to strike zone better. Tried to get him to hit down on the ball so that he could take it advantage of that great speed, but he's always been a fly ball type hitter. Mr. Downing has found himself a home, and if he keeps that up, he'll be around for a whole lot longer. Lega takes it inside. 
thirty nine year old Brian Downing and uh, Melvin walks out have a word with his pitcher. Well one thing about Brian Downing just with every thirty five year old plus player that I've ever known Dwight Evans Nolan Ryan keeps himself in tremendous shape you look at his guns he's always been a, one of the first guys along with Lance Parrish to start lifting weights has maintained that throughout his career and it's really helped him. He also has something in common with Ricky Henderson as Melvin again goes out he's a power hitter and in the leadoff spot he'll drive the baseball. He's talking about the work he's done take a look at the arms. I mean his upper body strength is enormous which is why he can drive the ball so well. Well he bench press presses well over 420 pounds and I talked to him one day about that. And he said he just felt like he was more supple. He felt stronger mentally, and that's what happens with exercise. Anytime you exercise or run, you feel better mentally. Pettis at first, and he brushes him back again, and he's behind on the count now. Three balls and no strikes. This game thus far has been a real struggle for both Robinson and Rogers with the strike zone. Jeff Hewson will be the on deck batter, second in the lineup. Well, if you're going to throw this man inside, you better throw it way inside. He has that open stance. He loves a fastball down and in. Dead pull hitter. Already has three home runs. And he draws a walk. Third walk given up by Robinson and the fans. You're getting a little anxious here, even though it's only the third inning. The Orioles getting a couple of runs in the bottom of the second. That's when a pitcher wants to come out and put the opposition down in a hurry, slam a door. But right now it's Texas opening it up with two on and one out. Remember the Orioles have already pulled two double plays in this game. Robinson will go for another one right here. Pettis at second, downing at first. Houston hit into one of those double plays in the first inning. He's now five for 15 on the season. Three for eight lifetime against Robinson. Well, he's missing everything away, Gary. And a lot of times, what you have to do, you have to make an adjustment either with your feet on the mound by moving over an inch or two, or have the catcher to sit up on the inside part of the plate in order to change that focus. Robbie has thrown almost everything on the outside part of the plate. See if Bob Melvin sets up on the inside part to compensate for it. No, he's still sitting up right down the middle. Playing him to pull in the infield, third base line open, and he finds the strike zone to the derisive cheer. One ball, one strike. Jeff Houston, last season, almost 400 at bats, finished up with a 240 average, no home runs, and 28 RBIs. He spent a lot of time in the number nine slot this season, or at least for tonight against Robinson. He's moved up to bat second. Two to nothing. Baltimore on top. Texas threatening here in the third. This is going to be an American League game, about three hours and 55 minutes. <laughs> you can tell already. Here's the 1 1. Two See, balls, I, one strike. Pardon me, Gary. I believe that just with a little bit of change of focus, Robbie's, the, what's causing him to miss right now is movement. He's throwing the ball over the good part of the plate, but the ball's moving at the last minute, four or five minutes out of the strike zone. Watch this pitch right here. It starts right over the heart of the plate, but watch how it just moves real hard away from the hitter. It starts there, and it just keeps moving, moving, moving away, and then by the time it gets to Melvin, it's three inches outside. And this is the skipper. Al Jackson, the pitching coach, not out. Frank Robinson, the skipper, out. To have a word with Robinson. He has thrown 17 pitches this inning as Robbie heads back. Fourth year as manager of Baltimore and hoping to keep the birds in a race that ought to be wide open. You don't fall too far behind here in this Eastern Division of the American League for Baltimore. There's Pettis on at second base with speed. Downing on at first without. 2-1. And Ray he's also he's changing his delivery to the plate he's trying to find the strike zone he's either releasing too high or too low he is he has no release point right now. Well Gary you're right I saw it right there on that pitch 
He's basically a three quarter side armor and that time he came almost straight over top to try to get a little less movement on the ball and try to locate the ball over the plate. Three one. Hitters count. Three two. See he came right over the top with that fastball again and you see it was just like a true four seamer with hardly any movement sideways. The thing that amazes me about Robbie watch how he comes almost straight over top with this pitch. We talked about him being a sidearm or three quarter slinger type pitcher and that time he came right over the top just trying to find that home plate and negate some of that sinking movement. Only one out. Full count runners go and it's foul back. So Valentine trying to avoid the double play sends him. And there he went back to dropping down a little bit as you can see that ball starting to really tell away from that left handed hitter. The thing that, that surprises me is that his out pitch is a split finger. Watch him here now the pitch before he was straight over top. Now watch how his elbow gets kind of down underneath this ball and he comes kind of and slings it sidearm a little bit. And that ball had a tendency to run away. Boy, but when he throws like that, Ray, he's throwing all arm. He's he, got no leg push at all. He really is, but I was going to say, I haven't seen him throw that fork ball, but one time tonight, he's going all fastballs. Downing back to first. He stepped off, then made the move. Ray, you wonder, 2016 wild pitches last year, you get somebody on base, you may be afraid to throw that. Well, he may be, but he also has a real tight, sharp slider, which I've only seen him throw to one guy, and that was Petrali. I realize a lot of times you it's hard to throw sliders into to left handed hitters but I always felt that that was one of the most effective pitches from a left hander into me was that hard tight slider runners go again and again Jeff Houston fouls it off so we will go a third time on the three two count with one out and runners at first and second but I tell you one thing he's thrown about seven or eight fastballs in a row to Houston and if he continues to throw that fastball at the same speed somewhere around that plate these major league Hitters are going to rack attack it. He's sitting on it right now, and he's got Palmero, then Sierra, then Franco, the middle of that Texas order. She doesn't want to face, so he'd like to get the ground ball for the double play right here. Well, this is a time where that split finger would be outstanding, although it's three and two. If he could throw it anywhere starting about thigh high, he'd get Jeff Houston out. Runners go, three two. That one cracked the center field. Devereaux will have plenty of room. And the runners who are off have to get back to the bag. So now there are two down with Palmero coming up first, though. John Saunders. Cubs and the Pirates. Mike Balecki in for Danny Jackson, who pulled up lame. First battery faces with Jay Bell aboard Andy Van Slyke. And there's simply no question about this one. Off the facade, 2 nothing lead. They've moved to the fourth. Back to Gary and Red. Two clubs expected to uh, battle in the Eastern Division of the National League going at one another. Two down here. Runners remain at second and first. Pettis and Downing. Now here's a tough out. Oh boy. <laughs> Rafi just 26 years old led the American League with 191 hits last year. Led the American League with singles with 136 third and average 319. Had 89 RBIs. Talked about him not hitting with power. Because he only hit eight home runs a year before last year at 35 doubles, six triples, and 14 home runs. Great play right there by Melvin. That was almost a wild pitch. He had to short hop it. Melvin saves the base runners moving up. And you're exactly right, Gary. He just does not have confidence in that split finger. That's a split finger pitch. Watch how this ball starts down almost immediately. That's that split finger, and he is not, he does not have confidence in that pitch. Therefore, he's going basically all fastballs. Palmero popped out his first time up lifetime seven for 16 against Robinson. 324 with runners in scoring position last year. Those numbers do not bode well for the pitcher in this circumstance and they do for him and he's got a 2 0 count. And what happens to you you have to establish the inside part of the plate. Robbie has not thrown one pitch except for the slider to Petrali on the inside part of the plate. After a while, hitters just start looking out there and they'll start whirling that ball to left field and hitting bullets. See, fortunately, when he's made a pitch for him, fortunately, he's made it down. It's been very tough for these guys to get a good part of the bat on the ball. Palmero hit 438 against Baltimore last year. 
three home runs 14 RBI's last year alone against the Baltimore Orioles even though the Orioles took the season series eight games to four so I mean he's got everything going for him in this at bat except time catches up to you. <laughs> two down a two one count two on Baltimore is leading two nothing here in the third inning and Robinson you see is struggling along throwing a lot of pitches. Well, Rafi's a pure hitter, Gary. He'll hit the ball all over the ballpark. He'll pull the breaking ball and hit the fastball the other way. So he has a very tough out. 2 1. Three balls and one strike. Remember that Robinson lasted only two innings in that outing against the Texas Rangers his last time around. And he's not having much more success here, even though he's in the third. Well, Rafi only walked 40 times last year, three and one count. He's certainly looking for a duck here, but but he's a type of hitter that likes to swing the bat three and one. And any pitch anywhere close, he's going to be swinging, I believe. Three one. He was center field. It is playable right at Devereaux, and he clocked it. And Robinson gets out of the inning. No runs, a couple of walks. Both of them left on. We go to the bottom half of the third. Two nothing Baltimore. help but smile probably more about his dad coming down from third than anything else because his dad was wound up when he started to go back there is Cal senior the third base coach five times Ripskin has gone on the season twice in this game tag deep to left field Davis looking goodbye home run that's why you're here With a two and one count, you do not come into this man. He's a great fastball hitter, great cripple hitter. Fastball right down the middle. You can just forget it. When you throw this man a fastball, when he's ahead in the count, you might as well forget it because he's going to kill Dwight it. Dwight Evans follows it up with a base hit to center field. First ball hitting. Evans has been on twice now with a single and a walk. And that's going to be the fifth Baltimore hit off. Kenny Rogers home run number two for Glenn Davis Boy, did that's one of those where the sound is worth being at the ballpark for well that's why he has thir hit 30 home runs at the Astrodome when that man hits them they are gone I mean long gone he hits nothing cheap and they're line drive type home runs that's why he hit so many at the dome the dome you could not hit the ball up in the air for a home run because it was so dead but you could drive it out and Glenn Davis drives the ball as good a fastball hitter as I've ever seen. Davis now has five RBIs on the season and the Orioles lead three nothing and with two down and a runner at first Worthington who singled and scored in the second. Down low. Rogers is not one at least in his history to have given up a lot of home runs. He gave up only six home runs last season in almost 100 innings pitched. And this season, that is the first home run hit off him. That was hit. 2 0 count slapped into the glove as Rogers came back the other way. Flip the first to Palmero will do it. But the Orioles pick up their third run. On Glenn Davis's second home run of the season, they leave a base runner on and lead 3 0. First half of the doubleheader here on ESPN. See the Orioles with that 3 0 lead now, out hitting the Rangers 5 2. Yours truly with Ray Knight on this Friday night in Baltimore. All I can think of is Sabatino's is open till 3 o'clock in the morning. So, no, you guys can take all the time you want. I'm still eating pasta when this game's done. <laughs> hey, I've got a flight out at 5.45 in the morning. I... Oh, man. <laughs> Pitch is taken outside by Sierra. Ball one. <laughs> We've got to correct something, Ray. I do. Actually, Baltimore had to correct it. They made a 
mistake in their game notes. Jose Mesa has not been sent down. 1 0. Jose Bautista has been taken off the roster to make room for Ben McDonald today. Mesa will pitch in tomorrow's game. You know, Gary, when you said that, I was almost shocked because Al Jackson was, was so strong in his commitment to uh, Jose Mesa. We saw him pitch the other night down in Fort Lauderdale, and he had outstanding stuff. And he said that he was going to be his fourth starter all year long. <laughs> and I said, no, wait a minute. One ball, one strike. And Sierra foul tips that one into the mitt, held on to by Melvin. Franco and Reimer will follow. Sierra drew the walk his first time up. We'll take that pitch that was mighty close. Robinson stayed down on the follow through hoping for a call didn't get it. Well that's a slider. That's that slider. Got on top of it. Pretty good break but watch how this ball comes into the hitter. A little bit of movement in a real tight slider almost like a cut fastball. Two two. Right now the Rangers got to be wondering what is it about this Baltimore team gets to be five years when you're struggling against the ball club you really begin to wonder personnel change but the scores and the results of season series don't Baltimore leads in the season series this year two games to one and they've got a lead here three nothing and Sierra takes the count to three balls and two strikes Bobby Valentine said I just hope ball club can get this monkey off their back here at this series get this thing going this starts to get a little bit troublesome well I think too you can talk too much about it you know I I believe that all all slunts become are mental they all have physical ability this is a great ballpark it's a fair ballpark we talk about the home runs here the infield is fairly fast it's not something that should just give the Orioles that much of an advantage you still have to hit the ball here the only difference between this and the Texas ballpark is the Texas infield is much faster and the gaps are just a little deeper. But there's no rhyme or reason why these teams should match up that lopsidedly. Drill to first. The practice pays off. Davis, who came out and took those ground balls, handles that one here to start the fourth inning. Sierra's retired. One down. He was out, and Ray and I got to the ballpark. And uh, was taking ground balls all by himself out there, Ray, with Cal Ripken hitting him. Well, he took at least 100 ground balls, but I want you to watch and see how he squares himself in front of this baseball. This ball is a bullet. It hits one time, then hits again and comes up. He gets right square in the middle of that baseball. And that's what you have to do. You young people at home, always make sure that you get in front of the baseball. If it takes a bad hop, there's, then you can knock it down, especially at first base because you have that pitcher covering the bag for you. Takes it for the strike. This is what he was doing this afternoon at about 4 o'clock. Well, 4.30 actually. Cal Ripken hit him ground ball after ground ball after ground ball. First of all, really interesting how he started that, Gary. He started off catching balls with just his golf glove on. He caught about 15 balls with his golf glove, which will make you stay down and make you watch the ball right into your hand. I remember the story about Matt Williams and the ping pong paddle at University of Nevada, Las Vegas. Franco. Maybe playable. Evans. Not quite. That story, in case some of the fans listening hasn't heard it before, the coach at UNLV felt that Matty's hands were hard, so he designed a ping pong paddle and put strings in it and he put his hand in it and he made him take ground balls with a ping pong paddle and using his top hand to keep the ball there and it made him receive the ball softly because if he moved toward the ball obviously it would bounce off and and Maddie said that it did a lot uh, for him to become a, a solid defensive third baseman there's a lot of people who thinks he's 
who think he's going to be a Golden Glove winner in the future. Always coming up with ways to improve your game. Tom and House throws footballs for the Texas pitchers, make ping pong paddles into gloves. Uh, behind it all is a lot of work. Here's the one two. Franco on the check swing fouls it back. Well, we leave Glenn Davis making those three errors yesterday to show you how uncommon that is. His career fielding average is 9922. I mean, that is right at the top of the list. National League first baseman combined last year were 9917. His career is 9922. He's just an outstanding first baseman. Yet, three errors in a game yesterday. One, two to Franco. That's two that Robinson has. He's bounced at four feet in front of home plate twice now in this at bat by Franco. Getting back to Glenn Davis, he told me that today he's a very good friend of mine, now lives in Columbus, Georgia. Told me that that's the first game in his career that he ever hoped there wouldn't be any more ground balls hit to him. When he finally caught an out in the eighth inning, the, stand, the fans like 7,000 gave him a standing ovation and he doffed his cap. <laughs> Got him. Tough way to go in a ball game. Huh? So Franco becomes the first strikeout victim of Jeff Robinson and there are two down here in the fourth inning. So you see it's a contact hitter who got taken out. Well he throws him that slider see that ball no that's a fastball he just reared back and popped the fastball in the outside part of the plate. Reimer pops this one up to third base. Worthington circled a little with that wind blowing it over towards the line and Robinson gets the kind of inning he's been looking for his first one two three inning three nothing Baltimore. And it was a pretty bunt in the second inning that set up a two run second for Baltimore. Evans had a walk Worthington a single sacrificed by Gomez Melvin had an RBI single Ripken had a sacrifice and a squeeze bunt and got an RBI. That was two of the runs and then Davis's home run in the third made it three to nothing the Texas Rangers have stranded just three base runners only one of those in scoring position in this game against Jeff Robinson while Kenny Rogers has four strikeouts and two walks but has been touched up for the three runs on five hits and there's another one boy this kid this kid's very close to starting at third base regularly Gomez is on he's now four for 14 this season. Well, you want to see somebody keep his head on this ball. Watch this swing right here. Look at that head go down to that baseball. Walt Reniak teaches it. I'm a firm believer that the head is the most important thing in hitting. That young man right there, 24 years old, I agree with you, Gary. He's going to be not only an everyday player, but he's going to be a star. He is on the ball. They're wanting to move him up. He stays at first. Bob Melvin had an RBI single his first RBI of the season that came in the second Cal senior relaying the signs to him. Melvin suffered with the flu he was ready to go at the beginning of the season then flu took him out he had a serious case of it. But he's getting back in with some vengeance now a couple of hits and eight at bats. They will hold Gomez on at first base. Well Frank is playing that type of baseball that he's pulling out all stops and I wouldn't I wouldn't be afraid to say that he's going well I'm going to say that he would switch off to a hit and run in this situation Gomez not with that good a speed that fourth that fourth run is very important obviously grand slam can only tie the ball game then Gomez had only 12 stolen bases in five years of minor league ball so Ray you're right he's not going to go outside he'll hang close to the bag at first and the count is two balls and no strikes. Well you have to know your pitcher you know managers have to know their personnel that's the key for any major league manager is knowing his personnel. Bob Melvin has struck out six out of his last seven at bats he did drill that base hit up the middle on a hit and run you have to have a guy up there that you feel is going to make contact it has to be a percentage play right now he feels the percentage play is the bunt therefore he's had him square around 0 and 0 and 1 and 0 now it's 2 and 0 if he has any confidence at all that this man can make put the ball in play be the same play that we saw early with Devereaux starting the runner late him swinging the bat. And he was going to swing at that lets it go or he was just taking because the count is now three balls and no strikes. Orioles had three sacrifice hits coming into this game they've added another to that now three and oh. 
See if Melvin just takes with Gomez at first. He does. Three and one. Now we're in the same situation earlier with Milligan and Devereaux. Three and one with nobody out in the first inning. Frank sent Devereaux. He made sure the pitcher pitched. And let's see if he does it again. Kenny Rogers trying to warm the hand up. 3 1. Runner stays. 3 2. <laughs> Waiting on deck will be Billy Ripken, batting ninth. Ernie Whip, of course, picked up by the Baltimore Orioles, another one of the catchers. They have available on this team. Runner goes, strike him out, throw him out. Yes, by a country mile. Not what they wanted. A double play as Gomez is out at second base with a cup of tea taken while they waited for him to get there. And there are two down. Well, there he goes again. He's just certainly not trying to steal base. That's just moving the runner, trying to stay out of the double play. But when the hitter strikes out, easy double play. Franco came over to take the throw. Palmero, after the pop-up, will not have room. So I Gomez on the caught stealing. Ends up being the second half of the double play with the strikeout by Melvin being the fifth picked up in the game now by Kenny Rogers. I'm frankly surprised that Frank didn't send him three and one. If you're going to send him three and two, you might as well send him three and one. You get a good pitch to hit the guy, drills the ball in the gap, and you get an easy run. Three nothing lead for the Orioles. Two down, nobody on in the bottom of the fourth inning. And Billy Ripken takes it up high from Rogers. One ball, one strike. Billy had the squeeze play on, the suicide squeeze with the runner coming in the second inning, laid down the perfect bunt. Got his first RBI of the season. 1-1. One, 1-2. One. One well, I talked to Billy before the game. He said he's really struggling. And the reason is because he's watched films and his left shoulder is really turning off the ball. In order for him to be successful, he likes to pull the ball anyway, but that left shoulder, its first move has to be out towards second base. Billy realizes that and is trying to correct it. What a great offensive season he had last year, Ray. He hit 291 overall, and from the number nine spot, he hit 304, batting ninth. Well, he's a very smart ball player. I had a chance to play with him in 87 when he got called up last half of the season. Right center field. Sierra will put it away. Billy Ripken retired. No run on a base hit, and nobody left on. And we'll go to the fifth inning with the Orioles shutting out Texas 3 0. 